All right, question of the day. What is your favorite fast food burger? Now, me personally, I love the Water Whataburger Sweet and Spicy Bacon Burger. It's delicious, right? Because today we're taking a look at the White Castle, and I know that's me being a smart aleck. I'm aware, but also I really do want to know what the best fast food burger is in below. Now, also, there's the two by or double double animal style um, with fries extra well done, I think it is. Anyway, let me know in the comments below, because today we're taking a look at a dice pick em and placement game called the White Castle. Now, this is kind of in the series of the Dice Castle and Red Cathedral. Now, I'm not going to do a full-blown Dice Castle versus Red Cathedral. I am going to drop in my old teach from the Red Castle, Red Cathedral, just so you can see kind of the differences. And why I compare these is because if you ever give me two games that are next to each other on a shelf that have the same size box, similar art style, almost same title style, the Red Cathedral. The White Castle. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to compare them nationally in my brain whether the artist wanted me to or not. So that's what we're going to do. So we're taking a look at the White Castle and I'm going to give you the teach of the Red Cathedral just to see how you want to play. Is it even called the Red Cathedral? It might be called just Red and I may have just blown that whole point. But that's irrelevant. So let's take a look at how both of these play and you can make your decisions from that but I'm going to give you the final thoughts about the White Castle because you can go and watch my Red Cathedral review back in the day. Probably at the old house. No, it was at this house. It was right there at that table. Out there, not this one. Okay. A brief overview of how to play the White Castle. In the White Castle, you are a minor clan in Japan. So we have green and we have blue. And we are competing for favor in the court of the White Heron. So these are the starting player, not starting player tokens. These are the player markers and I am crazy because here it is. This is the player marker and I thought it was a chicken this whole time, but duh, obviously it's a heron thematically. It makes so much more sense. You choose your starting resources in reverse player order. I've already taken care of that. Um, the starting resources are on this card. So I didn't take care of that. That was not true. So I get two of those, one of those, five money and a daimyo. Then you turn this over and put it in what is called your lantern area. So you may either take a dice from the left side of the bridge or the right side of the bridge, never in the middle. If you do take the lower dice because you order them lowest to highest, if you do take the lowest dice, you can perform your lantern action, which means you go back over here to your board and get anything that's face up here. So right now I would only get that. All right, and let's say for my second turn, I took the orange five and I want to do the training yard action. I would put it here because five is higher than four. I will gain a coin. So um, to do the orange action, I take my warrior and I place him in one of the training yards. If I spend one iron, I can earn three shells. If I spend five iron, I can move up two on the track. If I spend three iron, I can take a bonus orange action somewhere on the board. That's a good idea. So let me do that. So I put the green guy there and I get to do any of the orange actions that are currently showing. Let's see, I would like to do this one. I can spend Daimyo to take a bridge action. Or if I were to do that orange action, I would gain a favor on the track and I get to run my lantern. If I were to do this one, I would get to do this again. If I were to do, that's it. Oh, I could spend a Daimyo here to place one of my courtiers in the castle. Which is the top row. Put him there, and then I could spend two coins. You have to spend two coins, because I'm doing the castle action. You spend two coins to place him on the bottom floor. Then you can either spend two seashells to move him up one flight, or you can spend five seashells to move him up two flights. You then take the card from where you land, and you turn this one over and put it in your area, in your lantern area. When we run the lantern next time, I would get a seashell and a thing on the track, a movement on the track. All right, at the end of the game, it matters how many guys you have here and how many guys you have here. So your warriors are two fans, which are points, two fans times your number of courtiers you have in the castle, not down here on the, the bottom level. Sorry, that's warrior. Not down here on the bottom level. That would be worth nothing. But if I have one guy here, he is times two of these guys that I have here. So right now he's only worth two points. But if I had four guys in the castle, he's worth eight points. But if I had him there with another friend, if I had two friendly warriors here times four guys over here, that's way more points. So you kind of have to examine how you want to play that. Other actions, if you go here, you can do either the bridge 
or the castle. The bridge is over here. You would take your little gardeners and put them in one of the garden slots, which this would cost you two rice, but you would also gain any action um, of the whites that are showing. This one would let you spend three coins to take the warrior action over here. Again, if you take from the left, you get to run your lantern, which mine has currently improved. So there are a few actions on your board. You have to go here with a six or pay the difference. So if I put an orange six here, I would gain everything that is showing. Let me just move these. And depending on how many guys you have removed, it's worth more money. Or sorry, not money, points. Food, money, daimyos on some of them, lantern action on some of them. And that is basically it. You take three turns each round at the end of the game. After you've done nine turns, you will hopefully have enough favor to make your clan the most popular one with the court of the White Heron. So this is Red Cathedral right here. So here's the main board set up. Essentially, there are resources. I'm going to show them to you here because, no, I do not need them to uh, take them out of the bag for you to see them. But you've got brick, you've got gold, you've got wood, you've got stone, and you've got two types of gems. You've got green gems and purple gems, which are, in fact, really awesome-looking little gems. You also have a player board, and there's money, too. But on this board, let's talk about this first because one of the main three things you can do is this board. Now you can do kind of a Mancala Trajan sort of thing where if I want to move this dice, let's go one, two, because it's a two, I would then take whatever's here. This would be two wood per dice here. They can hold three dice, so I would actually get four wood for this. I would then roll any dice used in that. So now this is a five, so if someone would take one, two, three, four, five, they would get two coins. Then you would roll this. Also, while you're in those spaces, you can choose to use the union that is there. They are different craft unions, guild unions. Some of them are instant. You can do it one time. Some of them are as many times as you want. Uh, different things like convert a coin to, or spend a coin to send a good, or just get a good for free. These are or, they're not and, they're either ors. So you gotta keep that in mind. Uh, what you're trying to essentially do is build a cathedral. So those are important when it comes to what you need because these cathedrals are several different types like this. Based on the player count, so in a two player game, you would build a cathedral uh, that looks a little bit like this. So this cathedral looks like this now. You have these spaces out here that you're gonna be building on. You are gonna take your little tokens here and claim these. Now you have a player board out here that starts with two that you can claim. These four will remain here and block the resources. Much like uh, Concordia, if these spaces are blocked, you can only hold six resources, but each one that moves, you get to hold one more resource. This is a hard limit. Uh, also, you can buy certain tokens. There will be tokens that are sitting on these that will give you benefits. So as you reserve them, you will take these types of tokens. Now every one of these will have one. If you choose to, when you place a token out there, you can spend the coin value listed, and we'll just put a couple of them out here. You can spend the coin value listed here to cover that up. So now this workshop gives you this. You say, what does the green die and the yellow die do now? Well, what this means is when you use the green die, like we talked about a minute ago, you also get to take the benefit of where the yellow die is. And there are several of these. When you use this, you get this. Basically, that's what that does. You're going to be claiming these. You don't build it when you claim it. You claim it, and then you send goods, that's what this means, to these buildings. So this would take two bricks and a purple stone. When you do that, you flip it over. You would gain any money listed on the top left and gain any points listed on the top right. So this is two bricks, one stone, and one gold. Now you notice there are four goods for this one to flip. You can only send three at a time, which means once you've claimed it, you can send them and they can sit there until it's ready. Once it flips, it flips over to this side here you then would have your marker on here still. Plus, you have an opportunity, if you want to decorate, you can put a door on the bottom sp spaces, you can put a window on the middle spaces here, and then you can put a cross at the top. They cost different things. For instance, if you wanted to do an ornate one, uh, it would be just that to claim it. These will go to the end scoring. If you want to add a green or a purple gem to it, it's worth one gold eagle. That's the big points, not the little ones. And if you want to put both, you get three gold eagles. Now I want to show you really quick, when you do the eagles, you're talking about a large amount of points here. We're moving all the way from one space on this eagle track to the next. So that's, here it's not as much, but over here in the beginning of the game, one to two is a five point jump. 
That's a large jump. So just know that the point of the game is to be claiming these spaces and building. When you build, there is a certain penalty if you complete your top one before someone completes the ones under you. But eventually you're going to have this all turned over and built. Uh, when the end game is triggered, you're going to score points based on the columns. The columns are going to be worth a set amount of points based on the completed things there as well as the wooden tokens as well as the ornate things the person with the most wooden tokens or things in that space wins that column and gets those points the person who comes in second gets half of that and the person who comes in third gets half of that in a larger count game that is essentially how you play Red Cathedral, though. You're going to be continuing to take those actions to build this, to turn them over, to send these up here. Fantastic game. Love it, love it, love it. You will, too. All right, concept. It's a seven and a half for me for the White Castle. Now, why? Because I just... I like, I like Japanese history a lot. I hear the show Shogun is great. But this didn't just grab me as like, boom, it's Japanese history. You're playing Ghost of Tsushima right here. You know, it's, it was like, okay, cool. We're, we're doing a work placement game with some dice on a bridge. And I was like, okay. Now, had, had I been to or had I known more about or seen the White Castle because the whole thing about the painting colors matching this and that, maybe this would have been a little higher. But for me, it's just a seven and a half. Now, don't let that dissuade you. That seven and a half is the lowest this game is going to get on this ratings. And no other one matches it, which brings us only higher from there. Board layout is an eight. I like the place to put your dice. I like the clear delineations of where the actions are for each thing that you can do. They've got the mechanics. I love dice placement. I love dice pulling. I love the fact that you can pull from this side to take these bonuses or the higher number from this side. To me, that is such a cool little thing to make it where each choice matters, where you may go, you know what? I may want to pay $2 to do or two coins to take this dice, but I'm going to get it, the bonus here. So that's, that's a pretty cool thing you can do. Then you've got the different areas on the board, like the whole the castle itself where you can move up there and get the points the higher you go. But also it kind of matches with the other area, the battlement area, where you're getting points for those people that are in your castle. So mechanical-wise, it's an 8.5. Art direction, also an 8.5. I love a game when a cost is one color and a... Uh, payment, like a, a benefit is another color, and that's delineated in this. I like that all the symbols make sense, and the reference book, flip it on the back, and you can see every one of those symbols very clearly. That is such a win for me. Art direction, yeah, we just covered the art is an eight. It's solid. I mean, it's this is a very muted, personal, like purposeful style. This isn't like an accidental art choice, but it's, it's, it's got a unique style, and I like it a lot. So, um, Art gameplay, solid eight. This ties the reason that gameplay is an eight is because the mechanics are an eight. However, it or eight and a half, but it drops down just a little bit because unfortunately, even though this is a plus of the game, but when you play it a bunch back to back, it can actually kind of detract from it. You only get nine turns. Now, don't hear that as nine actions because you're gonna take those nine turns and some of those may combo like banana banana as uh as um pat patterson used to say yeah go banana anyway it's from french canada not where this game's from so the gameplay is an eight but it can be a little difficult to get new players in to wrap your head because you will crush them the first time you play this with a new player because you're gonna go oh i'm gonna take this action which lets me do that which then ping pause me back here and lets me do that now that sounded like me exaggerating right there but that literally happened due to the combo bonus of one of the uh battlement areas being able to choose a black dice from the middle and i was able to go boom 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 and literally combo them three or four times back to back now if i broke a rule with that you can let me know in the comments but I still would have won. I'm kidding. I lose every time. I would have lost. Art, uh, like I said, eight. Gameplay, eight. Rule book, eight and a half. Solid rule book. Only thing I got to ding it for. I hate that feeling of it. Ooh, yeah. I don't know why I sound like the Macho Man. I hate the feeling of it. If, if you're going to do like paper like that, my goodness, get some coating on it. That just drives me crazy to feel like I'm touching an Emery board every time I open the page. But anyway, it doesn't really matter when it comes to the actual information. The gameplay itself is really good. This comes out to an average of an 8. A solid 8. The White Castle really enjoyed this game, permanently staying in the collection. Um, we'll probably pick this one up over Red Cathedral, actually, because I like the dice placement better than the pick uh, the main Kala dice sort of deal. So, that is the White Castle. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this. And yet again, we all know Big Mac is still a good burger. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, I'm 37. Yes, I have two children. I will eat that every day. Not every day. That's actually a terrible decision. I'll eat it any day. How about that?
Maybe not any day, but you know what I mean. Let me know in the comments below. Best fast food burger. Until next time, we'll see you. Oh, also, don't forget to check out the new Dice Tower merch. we got the new Dice Tower Fantasy shirt and the Dice Tower 8-Bit Tom shirt. Check that out.